Hi everyone. Hi guys. So lovely to see you again, as it always is. Um, I do wish we could have a way of seeing people through the camera, because I yeah, feel like I'm, yeah. I'm speaking to you, but you're not here. Um, so sorry. Maybe we should do it live with an audience. Yeah. That's a good idea. Where do you live? We're coming. Yeah. Um, Dan and I today have decided. This is very serious. <laughs> yeah. A house that we've not spoken about before. This is always a bit of a. Is it a red letter day? Is that what you say? Yeah. Uh, like a, a sort of a special occasion. Um, and I'm very excited because I have to say I've never smelled anything from this house. <laughs> I've never, and I have to say until now, I didn't. I this wasn't on my radar at all. So I'm really excited that Dan has introduced it to me. Um, you've smelt some of these. You've not smelt some of these. Give us a give us a bit yeah, of a, so, a um, filling in. Uh, uh, Sarah Baker. Uh, Sarah got Baker. In contact and she she sent us um, some samples. I have to say I really like these. Um, sample sets. I've got to say, it's very um, smart, isn't it? More and more, we talked about this before. More and more, the way I feel, I really enjoy discovering new fragrances. And this, I guess, this is partly COVID and partly lots of things. Is that I would much rather have a sample set at home and work through them at home rather than going into a, a shop, you know, either a department store or or a, you know, specialist shop. I feel on. You know, when you go into a shop, you either go for things you've heard about or you think, oh, I like that, those kind of notes, mm. I'll go for that. And there's other things you can miss out. Whereas working through a sample pack, you think, right, I'll just pick up this one. I don't know what that is. I'll spray yeah. it and test it. Great way um, to try them. So um, we've got quite a few fragrances here. Uh, some of them I've uh, worn for several days and kind of tested them out and got a, a little bit of an idea of them. Um, others I haven't tried at all. So we're going to work through the ones that Quite I've... I, I, I've uh, I was going to say before, you know, you'd said that we had COVID being an issue in that. It is nice not to risk death by sampling perfume, <laughs> isn't it? I mean, that's, it's much yeah, safer it's now than it was. But back in the day, you know, picking up a bottle in a store and actually giving it a sniff yeah. it was quite a dangerous thing i'm yeah. glad those days are behind us and yeah. I, can i urge anyone in shops get your bottles back out on display and yeah let's not make it a military operation to smell a perfume but, but even so, I mean, are much maybe, nicer. maybe this live, is another conversation but i wonder if there is going to be a move um, especially as department stores start to you know a lot of those big department stores are closing down now aren't they mm. for various reasons if there's going to be a move, more of a move to sampling rather than Trying in a shop and buying. Anyway, that's, that, that's that, another. We should have that discussion, and I think it would be a shame. Sarah Baker. So she's an American uh, uh, born. So she's actually an artist first, before mm. Puma, a uh, perfumer. Um, so she's now uh, based in London, uh, and so this is a, a, a British house, I suppose we would say. Um, and so she has um, uh, created, authored some of these fragrances herself. Uh, there's also um, some other perfumers whose names we will certainly recognise yeah. and whose works we're going to try. Sarah McCartney, Miguel Matos, and, and, and several others. Um, so there are All good so far. two kind of um, price categories. X-Tray is £120 for 50 mil. The EDP is £80 for 50 mil. That's very good. Yeah, so kind of... Um, Reasonably priced. So all the ones that I um, tested were the extra. I'm obviously kind of just you're going hard. Don't yeah, you? yeah, exactly. Going with the, the, so the real stuff. So we're going to start with Ludo. Ludo, isn't that a game? Well, here we go. So indeed, which is their newest release. So obviously, Ludo is um, a game, but is also a play on Le Oud. Ah, okay. Is very clever. Play. Yeah, see what they did. So this is Chris Morris, who is a very, very prolific uh, mm. perfumer. So a lot of uh, fragrances uh, for Zedjov. So he's no oh, stranger really? to a, a bit of oud. And so this is obviously, oh. you know, you can have two things in mind. You have L Ludo, games, and you have oud. And obviously the fact that it is a play on the name of oud, it, it suggests that this is going to be a, a, a slightly playful oh, scent. Oh, that's interesting, you know. I, immediately, the first thing that, that got me there was a sort of happy, fresh, smiley thing, and immediately behind it, the funk just started yeah, yeah, exactly. to come out already. So you start with this kind of, kind of uh, sweet, powdery, mm. uh, almost kind of fluffy, happy, um, and then you get this oud start, to, which has actually got a bit of funk. It never becomes um, desperately funky. There's a kind of dryness to, to, to the oud in this. So it's not that kind of, um, mm. y y you know, you don't have a kind of like a kind of indie, kind of uh, Hindi kind of fermented oud kind of quality. No, it's no. It's slightly funky, but kind of dry. Um, Just delicate, sort of gently purring animalic. 
I get so, a real I get a, I get a real sense of of dryness which is interesting because I, I, I feel mm. there's also quite a gourmand side to this it'd be interesting to see how much of the gourmand you get um, on card well, quite now a, quite a bit already I get I mean a, a few sweet, powdery I get aspect. I've got a slightly I've written down here cherry white ch chocolate hint of coromandel there, there's some of my first notes that I've written down <laughs> I get I get slightly cakey, yeah, like a like a nice icing, like a sort of a, a slightly off icing that you'd have on a carrot cake or something, oh, or yeah, a cupcake. Oh, yeah. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, definitely, uh, definitely sweetness. I can see I can see the relation to Coromandel actually. Yeah, I just felt I got a, a bit of that. White chocolate I got that, that combination of of chocolate and mm. kind of dried wood, really made yeah. me think of. Although I guess Coromandel is more of a lacquered wood thing, isn't it? But I can see the relation. I think there's there's that slightly boozy white chocolate aspect, but then th this this kind of funk just n sort of nestling in mm. behind it. Can I tell you what other fragrance? And, mm. and this is as a work. The other fragrance that it, it reminded me of quite a lot mm. was Wash from the Loft. Oh, interesting. Or the, the Wash from the Loft. I really got that, <laughs> a, 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 remi a, a, a reminder of that. In that you know, there's a lot of kind of dried woods mm. with a hint of you know in our. For our fragrance, there was kind of wine, but there's a, a bit of a, a I can see what you mean. kind of twang to this. Um, I really liked the fact that this is an obvious oud scent that you know it's steered away from rose oud. It's I think it's her, yeah. the only oud fragrance from the house, and to go in um, and avoid that cliche, you haven't gone for a rose oud or an amber oud. Absolutely, you've gone for something different. You've gone for a slightly gourmand oud, but it. it and a friendly oud as well. A lot of ouds yeah, are not I mean, very friendly and approachable. It's, although there is a bit of funk, I think. I think I've kind of written down here, if you don't like oud, I think you could still wear this. If you don't like gourmands, you could still mm. um, I enjoy this. You could pull it off, absolutely. Um, yeah, I really it, like that. It feels... Uh, very well put together. Yeah. Just from I've this card. Very well kind of put together. Have you? I also got, I've also, in, in my notes here, so later on I got a hint of pettigrain. I, and, it, and, and there was just, it went through a slightly mm. colony um, phase, which I didn't expect from from the outset. Well, do you know, it's funny you should mention that because, I mean, I know I'm always comparing this to that and this to that, and I don't mean to, but Sarah McCartney has a wonderful thing called Freeway, mm. which has this, like, petty grain oiliness with yeah. a bit of, of that kind of tarmac leather tyre road. Yeah, yeah, I wonder if Pettigrain can segue from those notes um, the, I mean, quite I, well. You're right about that, Pettigrain. It's interesting, because I was, I was thinking that, but I wasn't, I wasn't making mm. the association of why. And mm. I think Pettigrain might be it. It's, I mean, the other th great thing about, you know, as you may infer from what we're saying, is that I got quite a, 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 an interesting journey from this. Mm. You know, it wasn't what you smell on first spray is not what you get for the duration of the fragrance. I really kind of develops and the other again talking about comparing it to other fragrances gravity plus by the world in sense i don't know if you can remember that one but that was the that, that was a kind of aromatic fougere meets food meets um rugby boots did we smell it outside yeah 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 I think and I, I, I i got a, a kind of a reminder of that especially once this cologne vibe started to come out when i was kind of getting this oud plus cologne yeah i wish i could remember it more because i I, on, mm. I sort of hearing you, I can sort of remember what you mean. Is it and slightly modern as well, in a, in a weird... Yeah, slightly modern, but also very classic. On skin, uh, this became a bit, a little bit vanilla -y without being cloyingly so. Um, and it didn't, oh, again, too kind of gourmand. I um, do hate vanillas that are going to that cloying direction. Yeah. It's a, it's a huge turn off for me. So vanilla that can, that can stay on the right side of that. I, yeah, I, it, I, it, I enjoy. It didn't, it didn't go too far in that direction. Um, Quite voluminous as well. It's filling this yes. space quite effortlessly. And, and very, I found this to be very long-lasting. Yeah. As I mean, you know, and, and those are things you would expect from Zerjov. You know, yeah. th they're all quite big uh, uh, fragrances and, and quite long-lasting fragrances. So Did he do Richwood? Because I know you were mentioning Coromandel. I'm not sure. I, I'll look, I'll look it up. There, I mean, there's a relation there between yeah. Coromandel yeah, and yeah, Richwood. Yeah, I wonder if there's... Um, I'll check it. But, um, yeah, certainly this was the first one I tried. And a real... Great. I mean, I can... I can certainly well imagining this being a very big hit well i hope so because i think to you know to come in with something like that or it excites me about the rest of mm. the rest of these as well 
I, 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 what I was saying. That's not the saying, first, though, is it? Sorry. No, no, no. Sorry. This is the most recent. Ah, okay. This, 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 so, this, yes. this is the newest. But what you're you're getting is something um, obviously creative, something mm. slightly plainful. Yeah. And yeah, and I, and I, I, I do think that um, is something. Oh, it's just friendly. That's the word I associate with that. It's friendly. Friendly, but it invites you not, in, and but then not it gives safe. You some fun. No, not safe. Safe's boring. I don't like safe. Now, friendly and and inviting. Yes. Next, we're going to try tartan. Tartan. So this is another X-ray. So the perfumer is Sarah McCartney. Who we love and adore. Hmm. But it doesn't necessarily mean we like all of her. No, no. It, you know, we may have to throw this. So it's not going to smell like the inside of Mel Gibson's kilt. Well, I think that is part is of the inspiration. Oh, God. Mel Gibson's undercarriage. I can... I, I, I have to say, I thought, I, I thought this is something that you would like. I do. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know why. I don't know what it is. I can't pick anything out yet because my so, first reaction is just... My, yes. my notes say, big journey. The first 20 minutes is kind of wild. <laughs> It feels very, it feels very rugged, maybe because I said Braveheart. <laughs> it feels very rugged, outdoorsy. I'm, I'm getting like cold, flinty, st dry stone wall. Tweed. Tweed, yeah, tweed. <laughs> um, like a, 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 a sort of hedgerow. Thistles. Could be thistles. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I mean nettles. It's very, it's very dry, leafy. Yeah, tobaccoy. Well, I, I was going to say the thing I definitely got was peaty. Peaty, absolutely peaty. Woodsy peaty, kind of heathery. Heathery, yeah. I think yeah. that's what. <laughs> yeah, it, it's it's that sort of. I'm I'm imagining these. It's the cold these outdoors, isn't plants, it? Plants. Yeah. We were talking about the Yorkshire moors earlier, and it, you know you kind of get. I mean, I know this is Scotland, but I get that. Can I have a... Mm, I yeah, I'm sorry, I was it. hogging it. I get, I get a real sort of outdoorsy... Mm, yeah. I get this dry stone wall thing. Yeah, and almost, almost um, like cold, dry mud. Oh, yeah, Do you know yeah, what yeah. I mean? Not, not, not wet, sloppy mud, not, not soil baked in the heat. Kind of refreshing, isn't it, when you get that... Mm. You go outside after being stuck indoors. Yeah. And you get a deep waft of that. And then I, I've also put... Um, it goes a bit quite beery. It goes quite hoppy. I, 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 this is this is after a while. As I said, big journey. The first twenty minutes is a quite wild. <laughs> um, I'd love to try that on skin, actually. Yeah, it definitely went in a kind of hoppy, beery direction for me. And I got, and then I got this this kind of feeling of dry herbs, not really lavendery. I can't, I couldn't quite put my my um, finger on the herbs, but it was a dry herbal effect that wasn't quite lavender. It feels to me like. My voice is quite resonant. It feels to me like the sort of things that you'd make into a wreath. That's those sort of yeah, yeah. herbs and, and plant life. I don't know what they would be, but mm. I can imagine they'd be the kind of thing that you'd put into a mm. wreath, like fir and um, heather, laurel. Yeah. I've put here also hint I of really musty like armchair, like a well-loved chair in a favourite pub. I got that. I got. I got that later on I, because I felt uh, increasingly as this developed, it became mm. it became woodier, and so I think that's why I was thinking of that. And a favourite armchair mm. that you've spilled things on over the years, like little bit little of drops of whiskey, a bit of Lafroy, something yeah. like that, a heavily kind of peated whiskey. Um, yeah, and later on it's it became really increasingly woody, and I think you're already getting a little a little bit of cedar kind of poking its head out, and I get hint of shaved, mm. freshly shaved woods, and hint of burnt woods. Is there some almond or something in there as well? A little like bit. A little, something nutty. I definitely, this, uh, hmm. l later it became a little bit vanilla and a tiny bit ambery as well. Hint of sugar puffs I put towards the end. <laughs> that was a few hours in. Oh, it's good, isn't it? It's inviting. Yeah. It's very, uh, like it's very bustly. It's l energetic. Well, as I said, Lots going on. Yeah. A bit wild in the first... I love that. But I really that feel you kind of me. get almost the, the, the feeling of walking through, uh, you know, the Highlands or the Yorkshire Moors. Yeah. Through all those um, 
uh, dried herbs and, and cold, hard earth past a, a flintstone yeah. wall into the pub for a few pints and then some peaty whiskey spilt on your armchair. Perfect. Maybe a bit of smouldering um, fire. If you can't get that, then the <laughs> weather spoon at Holborn is fine. Um, yeah. I'm getting that slight paint thing, which I know is in so many things that I can't put my finger on why. This slight paint varnish well, that kind lacquer of, thing. I don't yeah, know what it turpen, is. Turpen, yeah, that turpen, like Yeah. quality which is I something love, you love, get love. In, in lots of things. But I, I mean, I mm. can't think of many things that smell like this. Yeah, I mean, Scotch peat um, by Prin Lomros. Hints, yeah. Yeah, h h hints of that. This is this somehow it goes a little bit more hoppy, and then you also get these slight ambery, vanillary. So as you wear it more, it, bec it kind of softens and warms as if you're falling into that armchair. Mm. That's really good. I mean, it's, 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 this is not a straight um, forward fragrance. Um, in some ways, you can maybe say it's not an easy wearing fragrance, especially on first spray, but it's, there's a great- but what is? I know, there's, there's a great- of Stuff that you're um, interested in. Journey. Interesting mm. stuff. Uh, let's have a look at... I'm really impressed so far with these. So this, uh, this is the one that I knew most, or I'd heard about most, which is Jungle Jezebel. Uh, 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 so uh, Jane. <laughs> no. <Not> Jane. <laughs> so this is, uh, this is um, inspired by the cult um, performer and singer Divine. I will, I will put um, a um, picture up Have here. you ever been to a jungle? No. I'm not. I'd like to go. It's one of the sort of things I like to do in, in life. So, see what you think of this. So, this is by Miguel Matos. So, originally, um, ah, they had this kind of limited of edition here. bottle, which is, I will put up a picture, which is really kind of crazy. Ooh. With eyes and um, hair and stuff. Wow. Okay. <laughs> this is a smell I remember from my childhood. And it's like, a, I don't know, burying my face in a load of jelly beans or wine gums. I was going to say those banana yellow. Yes. Little, yeah. That's it. That's <laughs> it. Sorry. I, I was, when I was trying to what are they called? I've just written sugar banana sweets. I don't know what they are. But you know, I'll try and put a picture up of these little yellow banana. Yeah, you get them. Sweets. And you'd also get one that was like, I don't know why we do eat this shit. That was like a, a set of gums with teeth in them. Oh, yeah. <laughs> like, why do we want to eat some teeth? Um, Oh, that's really good, actually. <laughs> yeah. That's the, kind of, that's the kind of thing that I think makes me love uh, Breath of God and some of the things that Lush. Yeah, I can Slightly see the kind of relation to that, yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, this is... Oh, I like that a lot. Um, this was just... Uh, this is the first Miguel Matos fragrance. We've yeah, tried, yeah. It was just read incredible. I mean, so many some, times. Yeah, we've been... Um, What's try. it called, did you say? Oh, Jungle... Jungle Jezebel. Um, so, obviously, I think... I mean, I'm pretty sure this must be a kind of a play on the kind of bubblegummy aspects of kind of white florals and in particular tuberose. And he's kind of taken that um, kind of to the extreme. Although I feel it's gone past bubblegum and has gone to banana. Mm. Yeah. It's, bu it's bubblegum, it's banana, it's, it's banana flavoring as well as yeah. natural banana. It's dry papyrus. What I was surprised, when oh. people had talked about this, they had described this as this really um, uh, animalic um, fragrance. And I was, uh, when I wore it on skin, I mean, should we look at the, the, the notes list? Um, when I wore it, I don't always look at notes list, um, but um, when I wore it on skin, it never quite went um, into that kind of super animalic territory. So the notes are orange, banana, grape, peach, bubble gum, rose, tuberose, ylang ylang, amber, sandalwood, civet, vanilla, vetiver, uh, and Tonka. I have to say, I'm a huge fan of that. Just even on first smell. Yeah, I mean, I really like that. I lot. can see, and I see what you mean about the breath of God mm. um, relation. It feels like it could be a hot mess, but somehow, yeah, yeah, yeah. does. I mean, it hangs I, don't, together. I, don't, I just don't feel um, when I wore it. It didn't feel quite as interesting as, as something like Breath of God. I was mm. waiting actually for it to turn a bit animalic. Um, and it, it never quite went there. And I it's feel like because he, he's kind of playing on the kind of sweet, chewy facets of those white florals, you go from that to the white florals and then it didn't quite go somewhere else, but mm -hmm. it doesn't have the incense of Breath of God yeah. or, or that kind of bacony vibe. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, that's a crazy fragrance. 
Uh, but just for that, just for that opening. Yeah, I mean, the I would wear great. that. I would. Lo- I would love to wear that. But yeah, I mean, you want to see what it does after ten minutes, twenty minutes, an hour, don't you? It's important. Yeah, and I guess I I was left with sweetness, whereas I was hoping it was going to take me elsewhere. But if you get a really deep smell of that, do you get like a slight like this the sort of fattiness that you get on a roast lamb? Yeah, possibly something yeah, a little bit. like some or some marrow. Yeah. Marrow, for, yeah. I can't quite explain it. I, I'm getting I'm something yeah. animalic in there. Yeah. No, I mean, there, there definitely is an animalic twang, but I think in. perhaps because this was a, a fragrance I've, as I, I'd heard of, expecting it was going to take me on this animalic journey, I, I didn't mm. quite get there. I mean, it's, yeah, it's not full-blooded. For civet, I would, I would have expected something. But then again, like, I've got and civet even, by zoologist, and that's so no, that's warm no, and cuddly. Yeah. Um, I would have expected and obviously, sort of funky you know, you, you're only smelling this on card now. But the couple of times when I wore it on skin, it just didn't quite. I kind of sprayed it, and I was like, didn't "Oh pop. wow, this is this is great. This is going to be awesome." And then it didn't quite uh, take yeah. me. Just needs that another yeah. gear, another gear, doesn't it? Um, right. Let's let's but move. First, I mean, first impressions of, of that opening, I really I enjoy. But maybe I enjoy white florals and bubblegum tuberosey things. I'm sort of preconditioned to love that now. Yeah. It's, oh, I so think I need to wear there's it something see. immediately, you know, um, comforting and uh, familiar mm. about that. No, that's already got something on it. Let's, um, right, Sherard. This is by Andreas um, Wilhelm. I mean, yeah, please do. Should we Sherard this? It would be awful. <laughs> I, can't, I can't even remember what the symbol is for film or movie or anything. I did play a sort of version of, what, what's the game where you all chuck, you all write a load of words, chuck them in a thing, and then people pull them out. Put them in your head. No. No, it's no. like it's in three rounds. The first round is you ha- you you have, oh, yeah, you yeah, have yeah, one yeah. word to describe it, then you have to act it, and it's in three rounds, and you have to remember the you have to remember the words from earlier rounds. Yeah. Um, we, we did one of those recently. Yeah, uh, quite a filthy. One. Can't remember what it is though. So. Ah, okay. I shall read. Oh, I could have read some of these blurbs. Charade, cross and double cross. Who's filling who and. When the stakes are high, a lingering vapour of classic silver screen sophistication, impeccable taste, and a few surprises. Um, so, Andreas Wilhelm has his own brand of perfumes, also made fragrances for perfume socks and a few more. So, you get, as the name infers, you get massive vintage vibes from this. I get big vintage vibes, but I also Sorry, get I? big, I get a big sort of candy flossy, Baccarat Rouge. Oh, yeah, yeah. Territory. Mm. I don't know if it's candy floss. I mean, there's a kind of sticky, mm. a sticky sweet. I mean, there's a little bit thing. of sweetness. I got when I get it on, got it on skin. I, like I, it I, I didn't really quite get that much of it. I got more of a of a slightly leathery kind of um, vintage sheep bro. You know, the likes of which we kind of talked a little bit about. Hint of there's a little peak of galbanum. You know, I like galbanum in my kind of leathery sheep, mm. but you, it doesn't become huge. It's got a bit of the leather. That, I don't know if you remember ever smelling that leather Al Janaid from Janaid Jamshed. I had uh, Oud Kadim and that other leather one. Vagrant, yeah. yeah. It's, it's, I don't know if there is leather in there, but I get... I think, oh yeah, yeah. There's a backgroundy yeah. leather that's coming out. But I'm getting that sticky, like slightly cooked element as well. Mm. Like well, a slight caramel. It's not very sweet, but a slight cooked caramel, slightly, slightly burnt caramel mm. or something, or candy floss. I get, it's interesting, yeah, I, 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 well, I get that candy floss, I don't know if, it, uh, later I got some tuberose, which I didn't quite get in the opening. In the opening I was definitely reminded of things like Azure or Cabochard. Mm. Um, I mean, already, yeah, already. By the, Bernard the, Chant. The um, candy floss thing is already receding, maybe it was just an initial burst of something. It's quite a serious perfume. It is, yeah. It, well, yeah, it is quite serious. I did find it softened a bit um, after about half an hour. And it becomes a little bit more kind of honeyed. Mmm. Um, on skin, on skin, I found the, the opening a little bit, um, a little bit bitter. It actually it smells a bit more open on, on skin. But I can, I can imagine, I mean, on the car there, it is quite, it is quite bitter and mm. sort of dark edged, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, I guess... Oh, I, I find that appealing. I do find it appealing. I just, I think I, I have a slight um, problem with this, you know, how, so how much were these? 
So these are 120 quid for 50 mil x-ray. Um, you know, we've talked about some uh, 20 pound um, classic sheep for fragrances, mm. which smell absolutely sensational. And this smells really good, but, and it is an x-ray, so it, it, it is stronger. But, you know, in, in a world when all of those things are available, I can't, I couldn't really see myself. Um, yeah. When I, worked, when I worked on skin, there wasn't enough else to excite me enough to, to part with my money for this, I don't think. No, I mean, it's nice. It's, it's, it's pleasant. I, I, I mean, I do like it. But again, I, I liking it and then thinking, is this something I would buy? Mm. They're always a slightly different equation. Right, should we... Uh, uh, yeah, I can't work out what it's, where it's going. Let's move on to the rules of attraction. So this is, a, this. this is another one. I'm going to do two cards, actually, so we can remind ourselves. This is another one from Migro Matos, and I'll read the play of all. Rules of attraction. Let's get stuck in there. There you go. What's this is an animalic beast. So oh, well, actually, no. Not, well, not what I expected from the... Dangerous yeah. liaisons. The flowers in the gardens are all beautiful, but some signal danger. Musky tones unfold as passions rise. Romantic, but hardly innocent. Lovely... I got chalky iris. Yeah. Really lovely chalky iris. That in carrot seed. I get a little, little nods of apres londe and slightly melancholic... Yeah, but do you not, but I get, things. even almost immediately, so you said animalic, I get cumin. Definitely cumin. Yeah, really good. I get cumin. something quite milky, like something like secretion magnifique. So I can't, not, maybe milky isn't the right word, but. Mm, I, yeah, I, yeah, I can see, but, well, I, I don't know if that's the kind of chalkiness of iris. Maybe. But I'm 100% getting cumin. And definitely on skin. My, I definitely, my nose has gone into I funny def funny I definitely got um, cumin on skin. Um, it was interesting having the other. Oh. Th th this feels. Um, the, the, I get a real kind of a vintage feel, but this feels incredibly theatrical. You know, this is a big bold, and again, especially yeah, on skin, funny. I get lots of this iris. Quite a lot of. I mean, cumin is such a kind of difficult. It can really overtake. Um, and I think this is just about imbalance, but it's it's really uh, poking its head through. And yeah, I, I'm getting I'm getting little hints of the cumin poking it there through, but I'm getting I'm getting primarily like an iris and a slightly off milk thing. I like the iris, yeah. but whatever's creeping <laughs> yeah. in behind it, I can't quite work out what it is yet. But it makes me feel quite melancholic. Yeah, I can say, well, I think, I think of Iris often does that. Yeah. I mean, I get, I get chalkiness and, and I wrote down here, you know, when I wore it on skin, that chalkiness went lipsticky and powdery, you know, as we often do in Iris Accords. Um, and yeah, and I, I think again, we, Joe's only trying this on card, but on, on skin, I really got a really enjoyable kind of shape-shifting feel. And I felt oh, we got, okay. got glimpses of flowers kind of like revealing that's themselves. what I'm that's what I'm looking forward to trying on skin mm. is actually getting some florals coming out because I can see them I can see that they're in there but at the moment I'm, they're not opening up mm. for me so what I'm getting on here is quite it's quite flat mm. I think what the, the, the opening is quite big and theatrical and a bit you're not you're on card probably not going to get past th this no, opening. Uh, no no but I certainly felt that you know on skin these flowers started to reveal themselves and opened up a little bit um, actually quite a lot and like were kind of really shifting around me um, I got I know I said also a, a, a polished wood feel I got later oh, okay N another hint of Coromandel the cumin is getting big now it's taken a while but it is get, it's getting yeah. bigger and bigger on skin like, I got yeah. it almost um, straight away and it lasted for quite a while but it did recede and when it receded um, I was left with the iris and then uh, basically I got iris with kind of vanilla and musk in the end which was really kind of comforting and I really enjoyed I really felt this was a big journey from this one this is quite I think this is quite a beast actually really it's yeah sort of the cumin and the and that slightly animalic edge it gives yeah, it yeah really really skin well that's I when I I expected Jungle Jezebel to be quite an animalic theatrical beast whereas I found this much more animalic and much more theatrical I, I, think, I think that I think that is if you were to make a really spicy version 
or something like Secretion Magnifique. I think this is in that ballpark. I get I get yeah. a lot of really sort of like sort of body fluid mm. stuff. I know it sounds gross. But, it's, but I, I think you're right. This, I mean, this is really bold, really bold perfume mm. making. Really bold, it really is. interesting that they released. I mean, you can see all of these fragrances. They've got lots of kind of personality already. Um, and so I'm really impressed um, yeah. by Miguel Matos and by her, yeah. for, by Sarah Baker, of having, you know, being willing to release a fragrance like this. It's, I mean, it's really, I think it's really impressive. I mean, you'd have to, I have to wear you have skin. to try this and wear it on skin. Get yourself a sample. This is, you're going to, oh. I, I think this is a kind of a love, love or hate. The, I mean, this is, the, I'm at the moment, I'm thinking I, I either will really love this when I wear it on skin or I'm going to really hate it. I'm, I'm not in the middle at all on this one. I'm not thinking, oh, this is sort of pleasant. I, you know, no, I'm no, right no, in yeah, the middle now. Yeah, going that way yeah, or that way. I think it's one of those fragrances that when I wore it, I found it really, really interesting and enjoyed it from a conceptual uh, perspective. Mm. Whereas I don't necessarily think it smelled nice. <laughs> yeah, and I, and I, I, don't, I don't think it's supposed to be. Which, as a, as a point of perfume being art, is absolutely what we're on yeah. about, isn't it? That it's not all about the ease of wearing and... Okay, so, so these are all the ones that I tried. Uh, so we can work through a few more, and these are just going to be our blind smith, uh, smell. So these are, you know, we've said lots that, you know, we are not reviewers, and we don't do no. reviews. What you see are two guys talking about fragrances. This is what we do if we're sat in a pub together, just yeah. talking shit. <laughs> we just happen to put a camera on. So we're just going to smell um, a, a few more. And give you these are now just first impressions. It's really so troubling. you're not going to get a review. You're not going to get um, any uh, description of dry down or anything. What was this called again? So this is Atlant. Oh, uh, this <laughs> is Atlant. Um, uh, uh, Sarah McCartney. In a mythical ocean, a seashell gives birth to the goodness of love. Desires lingers between the shimmering surface, fresh and beautiful, with an undertow. Full stop. Salty. Yes. Salty <laughs> yes. seaweed. Wow, it's really interesting. I mean, seawall. If you've seen our channel, you'll know. I think having grown up in the 90s, I've become really anti aquatic. Mm. And it's always my least favourite um, perfume genre. So it's, it's always pleasing when you smell something which you would have to, I suppose, c classify as aquatic. But. And it's mm. got some interesting body. That's the thing. It, it, it's it's, it's aquatic, but there's much more to it. Yeah. I'm going to get like a freshly ground pepper Absolutely. quality, almost incense -y. It gives an amazing, like, fizzy energy. It's, and it feels quite green for an aquatic. I, I, I find mm. that this, it's like seaweed, algae. <sighs> yeah. Salty. It, the saltiness I love. This is one of those fragrances I know that on a really, really hot day. Would come to life. On yeah. sweaty skin would just. Yeah. I mean. What's that Healy? Um, Sal Moran. Yeah. Yeah. Same. Not the same thing. Not, 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 not quite the same, but I'm getting a slight um, relation to that. Mm, I really like that. And I can imagine yeah, there is a, right. there's a hint of kind of kind of saltiness again, which I can imagine in the heat could come could come out. There's a nice incensiness to this as well. Mm. It's really gone for the kind of sparkling quality of you know you can imagine the glisten of wave glistening of waves. Yeah, totally. This is on. Is there vetiver in there as well? I don't know. I mean, we can read the notes. I mean, what she say? Yuzu, seaweed, iris, lily, pink pepper. Yeah, rocks, cedar, ambergris, seashells, driftwood. Mm. So the ambergris, that would be interesting. To and see how that and it's obviously yeah, that pink pepper as opposed to kind of freshly cracked pepper. I mean, yeah. you know, pink pepper is some, as I said to you before, a note which sometimes I find really off-putting, and it's not overdone here. Just absolutely in the right balance. Yeah, I'm, I'm the same with pink pepper. Mm. I'd really like to try that on skin. Yeah. That's good. Yeah. I like that a lot. I don't like aquatics at all, yeah. really, but that's more than aquatic. That's just, that's a representation. I think yeah. the aquatics, like, with, you know, full of, um, full of a, a calone and, and sort yeah, of well, that's really made to feel blue and oceanic. Yeah. They can just be too much. Even Nautica Voyage, I love in a weird sort of way, but mm. it overdoes it. This it mm. just feels quite like a natural seascape. Yeah. With the elements that that involves, it's all. But it's all quite. Some of those, um, um, you know, sometimes there there are some aquatic fragrances we've looked at which have taken it in a slightly animalic, you know, a, a more kind of seaweed. Mm. Um, this is definitely not that. It really is a, a just the, the kind of brightness and the uplifting qualities of the sea. But yeah, it's what you want, isn't it? Uh, you know, a nice crisp hot day. 
And it's is this kind like of to, to sort of set it off. It kind Beautiful. of reminds me a bit of Squid by Zoologist. Yeah. But it's just the uplifting elements of Squid. Mm. I like that a lot. Right. Very good. We're She's gonna, always great. I, I don't think that's about anything um, that I Let's want have a look at some lace. Kinky. So nice. these these are all the x-rays. Here you go. So we'll just have a quick chat about this. So this, oh, oh it was another Sarah McCartney. Lace curtains billow in the breeze. Beyond the coconut palms frame an Indian ocean reef. Creamy notes caress you amidst sweet floral and woody ether, musk and mellow. Hmm, I definitely get a kind of a, a slight kind of sweet white floral. Yeah. A slight creaminess. Slight, slight sort of chocolatey edge there. Mm. Isn't it nice how different these three fragrances from Sarah have been? Yeah. From that tartan to the cedar. Absolutely fantastic. This is much more kind of uh, comforting. I get almost a yeah. slight sun cream vibe to this. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Slightly edible, sort of chocolatey. Well, I was going to say there's some kind of peachiness without, not fruity peach, almost like a peach yogurt. You know, like a creamy mm. yogurt. Hmm. Slight, slight liqueur sort of taste going on, like a little hint of, of rum or something. Yeah, well, I'm getting, yeah, this kind of, there's a slightly edible quality, not quite gourmand, it's not quite too sweet, but kind of yogurty, maybe boozy. Yeah. Slightly fruity, slightly sun creamy. You wouldn't mind licking it. I'm definitely getting like um, summer holiday vibes. It's interesting. Yeah. I mean, what's the description again? Something about um, definitely, definitely lace curtains in the breeze. Yeah, so the ocean reef. Definitely getting this sun cream vibe. Quite kind of m musky sun cream as well. You know, as if it's slightly mm. mingled with you know skin. Yeah, it's it's got that it's got that human element to it, hasn't it? Or some, yeah, someone that you just have applied sun, sunscreen to and then you're sort of nestling up in their neck. Mm. Sort of bury your nose in their neck. I think that's, I mm. think that's really good. It'd be actually. interesting to see where, it, see where it goes. It feels, I mean, on card, uh, uh, maybe we're just getting a small snapshot. Yeah, I wonder if that's a little bit more animatic than we realise as yeah, well. Yeah, quite possibly. I mean, I feel we're, we're just getting the kind of start of that. I'd feel yeah. on card it hasn't gone that far in the first... It's so hard to gauge, but, isn't it? It's so hard to gauge. Yeah. Certainly an interesting house, mm. especially yeah, some of fantastic. these and especially some of the more recent releases. She's obviously um, bravely putting out some, some bold fragrances. Yeah, yeah. With a, kind of a, a nod um, to the past, there's some kind of classic vintage things there. But um, It's a nice mix, isn't it? I think it risk, shows a great, a great personality. It's risk-taking perfumery with plenty of personality. Yeah, uh, that's what we want all the time. So we haven't talked about all of them here, and some of them we've just smith uh, sniffed for the first time, so we're not getting the full experience at all. So it'd be really interesting to see if you've tried and lived with these, yeah. um, uh, what your favourites are. I mean, I, I was certainly, the Rules of Attraction um, by Miguel Matos was one, for, I think yeah. probably the most interesting one and bold. I mean, a slightly I kind of challenging, um, that was the kind of irisy, Cumini one. Oh, yeah. Um, or, but also then, I think one, I, I can see myself, oh yeah, I mean that is, that's <laughs> that essentially is having smelt that, having just uh, uh, tried the, um, some of those EDPs. But I think if uh, actually, if there was going to be one I would buy, it would either be Ludo or Tartan. Yeah. I can really see myself um, wearing those, especially Ludo actually, there's a quite, I think they've just n nailed the balance of playful and serious. Yeah. I really love the tartan, actually. Yeah. There's a great journey, and when you wear it on skin, yeah. you get an even, even better journey. So let us know your favourites mm. and which ones. I can't, like, no. <laughs> Sorry, but we the sometimes do disagree on these, yeah. Yeah, the, the cumin note is big. Because <laughs> I struggle with iris when it's that full centred, yeah. and I struggle with cumin, and the two of them together. They're not jelly yeah. for me, but uh, it's fantastic. It's bold. It is, and yeah, I take my hat off. Anyway, until next.
Till next time. Bye. Happy sniffing. <laughs>